Okay, so in this hour that is missing, uh, we're going to start, not finish, but to start the reactor life cycle. Mm. So what happens before and after we return and render a JSX component? So we know that um, we talk a lot about rendering a component. That's clearly the most important action of a component. Uh, but in sometimes you want or uh, you have to um, understand or handle what happens in other moments. So what happens when you write a function component in React is that the component go through three main phases. First, the React to mount the component. So the component is created and inserted in the virtual DOM first and then in the DOM. Mm, that's the creation of the component. Then there is the updating. Every time you re-render the components, change the state, etc. And then clearly, if there is a mounting, there is also a non-mounting. That is the moment when the component is removed from the DOM. And this is something that happens automatically and quickly, and we notice just the updating because it's where, well, we notice the mounting and the updating mostly because we, it's when the component appears and change the uh, appearance on screen. Uh, but in these three various phases, there are things that can be done and cannot be done. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in updating, we know that we can have the use state. The use state works only in the updating phase, not in the mounting phase. And clearly, when we change the state, we re-render the components, we update the component. And similarly, the use context hmm, that we mentioned. These are working at the updating state. And in the updating state, in the mounting state, every change goes to the first to the DOM, to the virtual DOM, and then option to the DOM. And then other things are applied. And we are going to see one of these things. And here in these slides, uh, also, there are reported other things like use MIMO, use reducer, use calbo, callback, etc. that are other hooks that we are not going to cover, but they exist. <coughs> and for instance, this use MIMO is actually something that only works in mounting phase. So it's not interfering with the rendering of the component is just for mounting the component. Hmm? So three stages, various things you can use in these three stages. We again use state, use context we know, and they are, are working and updating. But there are other two, and we're going to see one that is use effect that only works, that works across the three stages. So even in the unmounting phase, they can happen. And they happen, that's, that's important, after React updates the DOM. So the component is created, is mounted, is updated, and other things can happen after this phase, temporarily after. Let's say before a mounting or even after a mounting, but so you have the component on the page and then these things are applied after the component is rendered. These things, one of these things is use effect that is uh, to handle side effects in functional components. Mm? So we have said that functional components should be pure function mm? that get props, get state to calculate the output, to understand how to render. And with the same props and with the same state, the render should be always the same. Mm? The side effect is anything that do not target the output value of a component. Anything that is outside the scope of the function component to be executed. So clearly the state is something that is related to the function component because change the state, change the rendering. Change the props, change the rendering when the component is created, not automatically. But console.log, just to say, is not something that affects the rendering of the components because console.log prints something in the console. Mm? So in a way, it's a side effect for that 
if you use console.log in a function component, is a side effect because it doesn't impact the output of the components. It may or may not even consider the input, the props and the state. You can say, write console.log hello. And that is a call of a function that is happening inside a function component that is not related to the function. And this is called side effect. And one of the main, clearly, log recording is a side effect. Uh, manually changing the DOM in React component, that is something we, we are not going to do and you should not do, like through document.getElementById, etc. in React. All of these are ch a side effect, and clearly also fetching data is a side effect. Because it's, again, information that at a certain point arrive in a function component and may or may not cause a render, change the state, change the props. So this is a side effect. Hmm? And so since function components should be poor, um, it is a mistake to perform any of these side effects in the body of the component. Hmm? Being it a console.log, being it a data fetching, etc. Hmm? So uh, like our fetch of the API. And you also see that there is no side effect in the rendering phase, but only after the rendering is done and the DOM, the actual DOM in the browser is updated. Is that the moment in which the side effect happens? So you build a component, you show a component, you update the state of the component, whatever, and at that point, you should react say is the moment in which you should handle the side effect and you should handle the side effect with either use effect or use layout effect but still is about side effects and again we are going to see use effect as the way for our purposes to handle the side effects like data fetching that is clearly the main side effect we are going to consider getting information from a server because if we get the list of questions and we need to render the list of questions, that is a side effect. Asking for information to server, getting a JSON, traducing the, translating the JSON from a string to an object, put the object in the state, maybe, so that the components is re render it again. All this is happening independently from the original rendering of the state. Hmm? And side effects need to be handled specifically with the use effect hook. Hmm? So here there is an example. This console dot, so we have a function component that is, doesn't matter. It has a message that is a string made by hello and a name coming from a props. And then there is the console log greetings and a return of the message that is hello, whatever the name is passed through a props. This console log is actually a set effect. Um, and this set effect is executed, we know, after the rendering, but we don't know how many times this will be executed. It will be executed never, once, twice, when it will be executed, this console.log. Before the return, before setting the props. React knows, because it has rules to do this, but we don't. Hmm? Because the decision on when to execute this is under React control. And in addition, this is again a side effect, so it's not making the function pure. So the use effect hook that is written in this way, hmm? it has a callback, and then you can write code, and then there is a second parameter that here are these square parentheses, is instead a way to execute side effect after the rendering, after the changes in the DOM, in specific moments in time, or when something happens. And you as developer decide which are these moments in time, which is the condition to trigger this use effect. Hmm? Clearly you, for a console.log is not a big deal, because if you print the console log twice, it doesn't matter a lot. But for fetching information, if you don't get the information at the right moment, you have user interfaces that are not well done. 
that has missing pieces, that has incomplete pieces, that give errors, and every time that you refresh, you may get a different result. You cannot control the result hmm? without using use effect. Use effect gives you instead a way to control the execution of any uh, side effect function in React. So how to use side effect is a very dense API, but basically it has a callback, that is the code you want to run in this, as a side effect, and an array, mm, let's say, of dependencies. And the dependencies say when to execute that code. Mm. So the callback contains the logic. Uh, use effect executes the callback after React has committed all the change to the screen, to the DOM, to the actual DOM. Uh, well, the call callback will also return a cleanup function, but sometime but the callback is actually the function which you do the things like call the api for fetching the dependency is an optional array of dependency and use effect executed the callback only if at least one of the dependencies have change between rendering so if the callback depends on a specific value of the state, that callback is executed only if that state is changed between the previous rendering and the current one. If it's not changed, it's not calling the callback. So the dependency decides when and according to which condition you use the callback. But in any case, only when the dependency listed here have changes between one rendering and the next one. If they don't change, there is no callback called. So this dependency array is tricky, um, in a way. You can have, you will see a lot of warning about this if you're not providing the array, if you're using a function, um, a variable and not inserting it in the dependency array, but it's a warning and sometimes are useful, sometimes are not. Um, so the dependency array can be in three ways. One is not provided. So the callback and that's it, no dependency array. This means that the side effects run every rendering. Every time the components render, the use effect is called. The callback and the use effect is called. You can use an empty array like in the example before. In the empty array, the callback is executed only once after the initial rendering. So the component is mounted, the component is rendered, the user effect is called, and then whatever happens, that user effect is not called anymore until you refresh the page or the component is recreated from scratch. But not if something changed within the component. Or, the third option is when in the array you have some variables, some properties, some state value, etc. And in this case, the, state of the side effect, the callback, runs once after the initial rendering, like in the previous case, and then only when any of the dependency value changes. So not provided every rendering, empty array just once when the first rendering is done, with anything in the array, once when the component is created, when the first rendering is done, and then every time one of these dependencies change with respect to the previous render. And then there is, keep in mind, a big but that we will see next week, because if this elements here are objects or array, there is a, a lot of things going on hmm, that we need to consider. But in general, this is true. Hmm? When one of these dependency will change, the callback is called. And well, here there is basically an example. Um, so here there is an example with two uh, use effect. Hmm? So you have a function that is count that every time you click a button you set a state plus one. Um, 
and you have two use effect one the say console log my static number is the number called at the first rendering and the other one the say my dynamic number is another condition that is called at mount time plus every time num change yes once so if you have props.num comma props dot whatever and both num and whatever change it executed okay. it's not executed how many time the the dependency change a and typically look at this typically what you have is that the variable here is something that you use in the callback not always but that's the typical case so you some have something you want to control. You want to know when to change it. So if you use something here, you typically, not always, have also here as dependency. So if you start with number like three, so you see that amount time it will print three, and then three again because this one is called also at amount time. So that's why you have three twice, and then every time you click on the button and change num here and you see that you always have only the dynamic number is upgraded but not the static number because this is called only at mount time at the beginning the first rendering so again first rendering and this one is first rendering plus every time num change so it prints all the value uh, well here there is a timeline so the component is created and mounted. The function count, the function component is, is called. Use effect are both registered but not executed. The JSX is returned. Since the JSX is returned, the DOM is updated. Both of these are um, called. Then when you click the button, you have a change of these and then this second use effect is called not this one if you refresh the page you start from the beginning because you unmount the component and mount it again hmm? etc so clearly a state variable might be listed as a dependency in an effect when the state change the effect is running if the state is updated but the value of the state doesn't change the effect is not run if you have a number in the state and the number is one and you replace one with one the effect is not called the effect is called only when you replace one with 15 with another number so it's not only looking at the variable is changed but it's looking at the content of the variable is changed hmm? um, and you clearly can inside the use fact callback schedule a state change with the use state with set whatever you decide to, to use when you set up the state and the state will be updated after the, the effect is finished so synchronously and clearly again since it's a change of state if the change state the component is re-rendered again hmm? so if you have a state change within a use effect you will have the rendering of the component and then the use effect change the state and this will trigger another re rendering of the component and here there is an example with the same timeline as before in which you have a state that is, uh, tr uh, that is true or false for open and then a use effect that depends on the open hmm, state uh, and it inverts the the value when it's true it becomes off after half second hmm? with a more or less half second hmm? so what happens here it happens that at the build at the mount time this use effect is triggered set open is put to false but set open but open is already false hmm? so we this will not trigger anything uh, no rendering uh, and since you change the state and this depends on the state this is effect is checking if open actually change value 
since it didn't change value because it's still false and it was false in the previous rendering then the set amount is not called again when you click the button go this will uh, change the um, the state here in true so this is again triggered because open it change and also the values change and so it will put set open to false after again more or less half second this will change the state and will re-render the component so this is this is written in timeline there so this is what happens so you are putting things together to communicate but use effect is always called after everything is rendered for the first time um, the dependency array is particular we we are we will spend some time to discuss the dependency array next week um, but in general we should su make sure that uh, the array includes all the value that we want to change in and are used sorry all the value that change over time and that are used by the callback in the effect otherwise if you use something in a use effect and not in the props and you want to keep track of these changes in, from the the array of dependencies the um, the code will depends on the value from the previous render and you maybe don't have a uh, running so every value as a rule every value referred inside the effect function should also appear in the dependency array hmm? so the arguments of the function the variable the variable and the function ac accesses to closure or to whatever should appear in the dependency array hmm? if you don't put if you put a variable in the callback and not in the dependency array react will complain with a warning so you will see that warning uh, notice that here there is a should and not a must hmm? because it makes sense that maybe you are doing if something then do this in the callback and that if is just to discriminate between one case and the other and so that is a variable that you maybe don't want in the dependency array because you don't want to depend on that control variable hmm? so in general every variable meaningful in a way variable used inside the code of the callback should be in the dependency array in some cases according to the logic of your program and here is where the developer your skill as developer comes in it could make sense not to have something in the dependency array because it's maybe just a control variable that you want to to use to control the execution of something and so you don't want to depend on the on the change of value of that and in that case you will have a warning and you will say it's fine it's a warning but you have to understand when it's appropriate to put um, something in the dependency array and when it's not and this is some something that you do by trying by doing uh, things in projects that are slightly more complex than the example in the slides and we will probably see one of these cases either in the class or in the lab hmm? but let's say as a general rule if you have a variable that is not in the dependency array it's something for you to think about it if it should be in the dependency array or not and most of the time it should be in the dependency array uh, well clearly if the array includes variable that always change when executed the fact you risk to have an infinite loop because the variable change and the, set, the use effect change the variable and the variables change again so you are going to continue to call the use effect forever hmm? so in some cases again you you need a control in the callback or something um, and here there is just an example with the fetch in which you can see that in the use effect you have a function that is a synchronous function because the fetch uses a weight you don't need an asynchronous function if you use then um, in which you do the fetch and then you get the response exactly as the so this is wrong you don't need the response here clearly you don't need the response here um, 
Mm? You get the fetch, you get the response as JSON, and then you set a state. And this asynchronous function is called here, like we called the main before, and all of this is dependent on a query. Mm? That is the variable used here. Mm? So this user fact is called at mount time, after mount time, and every time query changes its value. Mm? Because every time it query changes its value, you probably want to get the new information from the, let's say, the server, from this fetch, and fill these fetch employees, and set the state of these fetch employees that will trigger a re-render of the components because you update a state. So this is a prototype of the example, and notice that um, use effect cannot be a sync. So you need this function because you cannot write a sync use effect here. You cannot write a sync here. So use effect should be use effect. If you need to use a wait, you have to define a function that is a sync within use effect and then call the function at a certain point because use effect cannot, cannot be cannot be a sync use effect something or or this callback cannot be a sync you cannot use a sync neither here or neither here it will give you an error so if you need to use a wait and a sync, you have to define a function within the use effect, within the callback of the use effect. Hmm? So this is just uh, a warning. Okay, so let's stop here from the slide. And we will continue next week with the slides. Uh, well, here there is another example. Just to, to show the example. And then here there is another example with the fetch. But it's the same. You have a, a function that is a sync instead inside it has an await and then get the response and then set a state with a specific in this case property of the response hmm? after getting from the JSON. So not the entire response, just a part of it. And this is to do these things here. And so if you copy this code, um, this is plain. And you copy this code, you should be able to do something like this that flip. Um, like in a mirror, the words that you're writing here in the text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try to put this in React. Um, so in React server, let me change this port to the port that we use in React, 5173, right? So that the course is set up and we can close the server and don't think about it for a while. So this is the same um, application we had two weeks ago. I just added an api.javascript file that is empty. Uh, because as a good practice, we will write all the APIs here, all the fetch here, and then we will import this file when needed. So we want to, mm, so let's try, let's start to, with the API, that is the things we already have done uh, before. So um, we can define, the, since we are going to use it multiple time, uh, server URL, that is HTTP localhost 3001. And then we can define a const get uh, questions. To call the fetch. Hmm? So the first thing that our application does is to get all the questions. So let's write an API to get all the questions. So what we are going to write here, this is fetch again. So what we are going to write to get all the APIs? Fetch. Uh, server URL plus uh, slash API slash questions. What is missing? A sync and a wait. Or then, as you prefer. 
Okay. Then Yes, we can say response to JSON. Wait, I deleted. No, I didn't. Uh, let's call it uh, um, question JSON. That is await response dot JSON. Questions. Yes, we can check if response is okay before or after. Um, let's have a look at what we did in the in the server. Yes, we say after because it's just two hundred or five hundred, so there is no in intermediate. Um, Uh, but now let me check one thing. Where is server? Um, yes, we we want to also maybe intercept this five hundred and treat it separately from the the question. So if here we have dot json and we send a message, also we can handle. That so yeah in in our case we can do if uh, um, response dot okay then we can get the JSON and and we have a JSON we have just done array with the the, the questions as described in the server we are in react what we need in react no not here this is not a component what do we have here an array of questions so here we need we have, instead here we have an array of objects generic objects so if we want to preserve the same things that we have before we should do import question and so doing something return question dot json dot map and for each question for each object build a new question So uh, question.id, question.text, uh, question.author, and question.data. And here we can write else uh, draw new error. for instance. Hmm. So we just build a new array with all the questions from object, but uh, building with the constructor with the text, author, and date. That by chance, in our API, we call it ed, text, author, and date. So here we have ed, text, author, and date. Okay, so we have this and we need to export this. Uh, let me export the entire file um, in one, get questions, because we are going to add other. Export default API. So in this way, we are exporting API and now we're going to say API dot get questions, API dot get answers, API dot we are just one object we import instead of many. Hmm? 
Okay, now, let's go back in React. So we need to delete these fake questions because we are going to get it from the server. So we, need, we cannot initialize the state with fake questions because we don't have it anymore. So what we are writing here to initialize the state? Uh, an empty array. No, not API. Because API will be called in a user fact, because a side effect. Mm? So this is just initialize the state. So mounting the component will mount the component with no state, with an empty state for questions. And then after the component is mounted, the user fact that we are going to write will be called, that will call the API, will update the state, it will re-render the component if the API response will be appropriate. If the API response will be an error, we, will, we should handle the error because maybe we are not authorized or whatever. So it's not, if everything goes well, we will see all the questions. But if we have problem because we are not authorized, because the server is not replying, because we are calling the wrong API, etc., the React application will not display the questions, will display something else an empty page or on a page with impossible to load the questions, something that will handle the errors. Because we cannot be sure, 100% sure, that we will always have the questions. Before we were, because we wrote the question in memory, but now we are introducing some, another entity, that is the server, that is, in our case, will always work, but who knows? So we need to handle the case in which there is a network connection error or something like that. 500 internal server error, we need to handle that now. So here we have a set questions and here we can define a user factor that we need also to import if it's not done automatically, like in this case. So user fact as an empty callback and a dependency array optional dependency array so let's start from the dependency array what are we are going to write in the dependency array when so this this will call get all the questions from api so that is what the callback will do so when we need to call all, we, to get all the questions from the API, every rendering, yes, no. We need to get all the question, every single render of the page. No. Let's start from the beginning. The, we, we cannot add questions in this moment. We, we don't have a button to add questions, right? So. We need to get all the questions when, after the first rendering. Yes or no? Yes. And, and that is the starting point, because if, if we add a dependency, we, we still need the array. So for sure, we need to call it at the beginning to have all the questions. And then, yes, we can also call it every time question changes. But for now, we don't have an add. So mm, we can start from this. OK. So here, get all the questions from the API. What are we going to write? Well, we need to import API. What we're going to write here? That's the code of the get, the call the other method. Mm -hmm. So API dot get questions. Just like this. With an if? We have to assign to the question. We have to set, but before setting, this is, this is a wait, right? Because this is an async. Hmm? So this, is, this will be an await. Hmm? And so await expression only allowed within a sync function. So we need to create, and this will be the same for every 
fetch a request we're going to do in use effect so it's again a template you can you can use so we can say uh, get uh, questions async and here we can say const questions equal await and then we can do set questions of questions and then we need to call this function hmm, that we just created okay we just call the API with the find that will call the server that if the answer is positive will get up the question in the same format we had before and we set the state so if everything works well we will we will not see because it will be fast enough but we should see if everything is low the empty page render it then the use effect is called then the API is called then the server returns something then this something is processed as JSON then is creating an array of new question and then is set as a state here and then the set of state will re-render the page and we will see the page with all the questions hmm? so let's try um, no. let me open two terminal one for the react application and one for the server and we need to start the server we need to start both nodem on server and we need to start npm run dev yes i need to install everything first okay 5173 And you see that we get immediately everything because the server is running on the same computer, so the response is very, very fast. Hmm? But if this was slower or if there was an error, we will see first the empty component. Hmm? So like, for instance, if we um, don't do this, just to see if it's work, hmm? you see that this is what we see at the beginning before this effect is running no questions because there is no information yet hmm? then when the response the question arrive we set the state hmm? this is re-rendered to include all the questions that we receive from the database hmm? but clearly since this is in the same computer very very fast because it's on the same computer, no network in the middle, the question are two questions, so not a lot of questions. We don't, we don't see, we don't perceive the thing. Uh, if we have uh, questions, as, uh, the state questions as a dependency, what happens when uh, the user is So in this case, nothing happens because it will be triggered okay if, if, for a question is added, if a question is added okay <clears throat> uh, this is called, uh, at the beginning, uh, so twice. more or less um, so questions is actually we will see this next next time but the question is a very is a complicated object because it's an array of objects that are questions okay so we cannot uh, use you cannot write something like this we we can but it's not working as intended but let's say that question is a number that is easier hmm? so a, a non-complex type hmm? so if question is a number and we write something like this this will be called at the beginning 
like now. And then if you add the quest, add a question, add another number, this will be re-triggered again. So for instance at the beginning this uh, would be called uh, twice because there is a set of destination. This would be called twice at the beginning, if this is a number, yes. So for instance we can put uh, uh, you can have an if here for instance. next week yes but next week yes that's a way to to solve the because these objects change every time even if it don't change because it's an object so javascript is not able to understand if it's changed or not but next time we will cover this and we yes we will use the length of an object to understand for instance one property one number in the dependency you need to have simple things not objects not array like the length or something like this the last id i don't know but next week okay so this was easy <clears throat> now let's try to do the same things for answer that's not so easy okay the API let's do another API let me copy and paste because it will be very very similar get answers Okay, get answers. Get answers, if you remember. So, here we add all the answers of all the questions in our fake answer. But in our server, we don't. We just have all the answer for each question and indeed we need the id of the question so this will change the structure a bit of our react application all right because we don't have this information now in the fake answer state hmm? so here we need the question id here the api will be API questions slash question ID uh, slash answers and this will be more or less the same actually not, not, not really it will be answers JSON Uh, because in this case we also can get uh, an error as json um, like wrong id if the response is okay this is will be an answer this will be a new answer that we need to import and the answer will have answer dot id text name date quest well question id we don't care uh, ID text name date a score ID ans dot text ans dot name ans dot date ans dot score and I'm going to delete question ID from here because we don't need any more now in the readme we add for the answer ID, great, text, great, author, score, and date. Author. And here instead we have, sorry, and here instead we have name. Right? So here. We cannot write a name, but we should write author. This is the object coming from the server. And then in React, we will use name. This is the value of author that will be associated with name. And then there is export. Good. So now here, we can remove a fake answer, as we did before. 
we can initialize this with an empty array as we did before but here we have the problem that we are starting to to handle but will not finish that here we will pass all the answers that we don't have can we write this effect here similar to this one here in up can we write the same another use effect or just writing get answer here Yes or no? And then there is a Y after. We don't know what, where, when we will have all the questions. Doesn't matter. We don't, well, we can say, okay, they are called together. But what's the problem? It's not that one. We need an information. We don't have a question ID here. Here, well, here we don't need the answer, first of all. In this page, we don't need the answer. There is no answer here. But our API will need a question ID that we don't have in this page. We have in the next page when we click on a specific question. So here we cannot write get API.getAnswer because we need to pass a number that we don't have. We have no idea which is the number because in this page we don't have the answer. So we need to restructure this a little bit. Because this state will not be used here anymore. This vote up needs to be moved. This can remain here for now. Because here we cannot pass answers because we don't have answers anymore. And we cannot pass vote up neither because we, we don't have it. So when we, where we have the ID of the question? In which component? In which component we have the ID of the question? The single questions. So here, instead of having these things, in which we get all the answers and filter for the question ID, because in that page we just need the answer of that specific questions. So we did that. Instead of doing this, here we can define the answer state that will be the answer of these questions not all the answer of all the questions because we don't have an api for that and doesn't make a lot of sense to have an api for that actually use state and we can initialize it as empty And here we can write a use effect. Well, we need to move vote up because we don't have answers anymore here. So it needs to be moved in single question. And it will remain the same with the exception of question ID that is disappearing. For now, for now, then we will called the API next week and we also need the use effect we can copy this and get all the answers of this question from the API get answers um, const let's fix this first const answer api dot get answers set answers answers and set get answer and we need to import api now what we are missing in this use effect So here we need the question ID. Where do we get the question ID? 
for the params we already did here right params dot question id should this param be added here why why you think i f uh, call what up properly yes but every time the question change yes in theory but from uh, so let's let's see if it's work first of all so we can change question wait yes we cannot change question from this page that is not working for whatever reason now we we can understand why but yes we cannot change the question from this page we, well let's fix this first let me see what's the problem Oh, use effect is not defined. Okay, fine. Use effect. We cannot change the question from this page. So yes, in theory, we could have this as dependency, but since we cannot change the question from this page, it doesn't really matter because that Params that question ID will be always the same because when we go back that component is destroyed is unmounted and when we click on another link we build the component from scratch and so it will happen at mounting time this one yes. not right now but if you have a next uh, or previous questions then this could change clearly but it will rebuild the components in any case because it's not something that it's a different it's the same component in another page i mean it makes sense to make the user parent in the dependency array okay. again if this was put here well, we don't have a question three. If, if we had here something that changed params, it could have make sense, but we don't have. So there is no way that that param can change. And if the param change is actually the entire components that is recreated because when the param change, change the route, change the route. And so this component is recreated because the route is changing. So if we don't have route, and if we have question ID inside the page, then it could make sense. But in this specific case, since we have the route to control the question ID, and we don't have a way to move from one question to another, it's not needed. Because it will never happen to change the params while the component is rendered. The only way to change the parameters is to change route, to change address. That will rebuild, will unmount and mount again the component with different properties. So this is enough at the build time, at the mount time. Okay? And then I just fix vote up removing a props here because it's not passed as a props anymore. And uh, what app is the same and it should work it should not it will oh answer is not defined I'm continuous to lose pieces import answer okay and this is changing changing in react is not changing on the server that's one thing we'll do next week 
Okay, so for, for today is, I would say that is enough. Uh, in the lab, you will basically use use effect and the fetch with get. So to get the list of films, no, not other, no post, no put, etc. If I properly remember, we will see how to handle post, put, etc. Next week in class and also in the lab. Okay, if you have any question, I'm still here for five minutes, ten minutes. Otherwise. Have a nice rest of the week.